Hi, I'm Carla from carlashower.com, and in this video I'm going to be talking about rock painting supplies. Just what do you need if you want to paint rocks? We're going to go through each of the major supplies you might want to use, and we're going to use them to paint an example rock too. So let's get started! Of course, the first supply that you're going to need is the rocks themselves. You can find rocks, buy them, or you can even make them. My very favorite place to get rocks is the Landscape Supply Store. You can find some pretty interesting colored and textured rocks just like these that you might not even want to base coat so that you can let the natural rock shine through. One of the benefits of stores like these is that they usually charge by weight, so you're only paying for rocks you like. Of course, finding rocks outdoors has the bonus of being free. If you have a public river or beach nearby, or you're out on a hike or a neighborhood walk, you can find some fun stones to paint there too. Just make sure it's legal to collect them, or your free rocks may cost you a hefty fine. You can even spackle and sand some of these bumpier rocks to make them smoother. You can also find rocks in larger bags in the garden section of your local home improvement stores. They might not be as textured and pretty as the landscape store rocks, but they can be great for base coating since you're going to be covering them with a pretty color anyway. They're also fairly convenient because you can pick them up when you're there for something else. Now don't discount the rocks that aren't perfect flat ovals, because they can also be used for painting. This one would make a great slice of pizza, a shark fin, or even a heart. The last place to find rocks is online or in your local craft stores. These stones are usually sold specifically for crafts, so they're on the smaller side, but they are good places for finding specific colors or types of rocks that you might want to use. Beware of the rocks with the wax coating, because your paint won't stick. You'd have to spend time removing the coating before you can paint your rock. The next obvious thing we need is paint. And the best paint for rocks is acrylic paint. Here are a few types that you can use. These are some of the types you'll see at the craft store, each with different benefits. These are multi-surface paints, outdoor paints, craft acrylics, and specialty paints. Outdoor paints are often used for rock painting exactly for the reason that the name implies. They are designed for projects that will live outside. There are a decent amount of colors available, and they're also really bright and saturated colors, which I love. An added bonus is that rocks painted with outdoor paint don't need to be sealed, although if you would like that extra protection or want a glossy finish, you can if you like. Multi-surface paints have a really pretty satin finish that isn't glossy, but isn't quite matte either. It is really nice to have around for a variety of projects, not just your painted rocks, because you can use it for so many things. One of the biggest benefits of this paint is that it's self-leveling, which means it leaves a nice smooth surface with no brush strokes as it dries. You don't need to seal this paint either, but it does need to cure for a few days before it goes outside. Craft acrylics are the standard paints that you may already have at home. The best parts about craft paints are the enormous variety of colors that they come in and how easily that they can be found at a craft store. They also blend really, really easily so you can get a nice ombre effect. Craft acrylics do require a few coats of sealer though afterwards before they're used outside. I painted these dots with a paint pen, which we'll get to in a minute. If you want to add shimmer and sparkle to your painted rocks, these specialty finish paints are a great way to do that. Metallic finish paints add a shimmery sheen to your base coats. They are available in colors and your standard metallics like gold, silver, and bronze. Glitter paints can be used over another solid color to give it an extra bit of pop. They are also a great way to add that sparkle without loose glitter, which is really bad for the environment when it falls off your painted rock. I used metallic paints for the base coat of both of these painted stones, but you can use both the metallic and the glitter paints for accents as well, not just for base coats. The last type of paint that you might see in some rock painting tutorials are artist acrylics. And artist acrylics are tube paints with a really thick, beautiful, oozy consistency. You might use them uh, perhaps watered down for some base coats, but where they really shine is for dotting. As a beginner, you don't need a lot of paint brushes for rock painting, but you will need two specific types. The first type of brush that you will need is a flat brush for base coating. A one and a half to one inch wide flat brush is a great size to start with so that you can get a good paint coverage with a minimum amount of brush lines. 
As you continue to paint rocks, you'll see which sizes feel best to you. The other brushes you'll want to have are these round brushes for lines and drawing. These come in lots of sizes, and you'll want a range of wider tips for larger spaces, and also some smaller tips for details. Round brushes are also great for making dots, especially if you have a steady hand. If you don't have a steady hand for brush dotting, or if you're just beginning, you might want to have some dotting tools handy. These can be items like this pencil eraser that you find around the house, or this dowel rod, or even a tip of a paper clip, or you can purchase a set of dotting tools. Dotting tools have different tip sizes on each end so that you have a uniform range of dot sizes. Just dip in your paint and tap onto your rock and you'll have perfect circles. To squeeze your paint into, you don't need anything fancy. You can use a regular painter's palette or a lid like this from an old craft supply like this one, or a jar lid, butter tub lid, or whatever you have handy at home. markers are one of my very, very favorite rock painting supplies. Here are some of the reasons why I love them. This particular brand of paint marker is called Posca. They are one of the most popular paint markers for rock painting because they're one of the best. They're definitely worth the price, even if you have to build up your supply slowly. Start with a basic set and expand from there. Posca paint markers are perfect for drawing and dotting. You can get these tiny little details just as easily as you can color a larger area. They are permanent on rocks, and I especially like them for what I call naked rocks, or rocks like this one that I don't base coat. Posca paint markers are incredibly versatile. They come in glitter and metallics, as well as lots and lots of different colors, and they can actually replace many of the other supplies, especially if you're on the go. The most popular of these markers are the three sizes of bullet tip marker. This wide tip is just over two millimeters. The medium, which is actually the fine tip, is around one millimeter wide, and the extra fine tip is 0.7 millimeters wide. You can see here the dots that I created with each of the three sizes of bullet tip marker. I recommend starting with a fine point set to begin with, and perhaps an extra fine in black and white. I've linked my favorite sets in the description as well. Other pens you might find helpful are those for outlining and details. These non-paint pens are also useful additions to your rock painting kit, especially if you already have them from another project. This first white pen is the Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen. Pit pens are filled with India ink, which is waterproof, fade-proof, and permanent, which is great for rocks. I use the smaller tip gold one to draw directly on this dark rock right here. As you can see, there are two different tip sizes, the fine point and this larger bullet point. The Pigma Micron pen is a felt tip pen with a teeny tiny tip. It comes in a few basic colors, 
but you'll mostly see the black color for rocks. This is actually one of the larger size tips that it comes in. You can buy these individually, or you can get them in a set with a bunch of different tip sizes together. The Pigma Micron is great for outlining designs that you've painted with regular paint and brush or paint pens, or directly drawing line art like I did here on this little flower pebble. You may already have gel pens in your craft stash, especially if you're already into coloring. You can actually use your gel pens on your rocks, either directly on the naked rock or over paint. They're great for small details and they come in a bunch of colors, including metallic and glitter. You'll definitely get better results from a good brand like Pentel, Signo, or Sakura than you will with the cheapy sets. This last pen is a special white gel pen called the Signo Uniball. You'll see it all over the place in painted rock designs. It has a tiny little roller ball, just like the other gel pens. It is one of the best pens for solid, opaque white details that you can overlay on top of your painted designs. In this pineapple rock, all these thin lines and tiny dot details were made with the Signo Uniball. Once your rock is painted, you need to protect it with a sealer to save all your hard work. When we talk about a sealer for rocks, we're normally talking about a spray sealer. There are several brands to choose from, but what you want to make sure to look for is that it is an acrylic sealer that is non-yellowing. Whether you choose glossy, satin, or matte finish is your personal preference because it doesn't matter to the seal itself. The other sealer option that is really easy to use is a brush-on polyurethane. I like to use it if I'm just making a single rock instead of a whole batch, or if I want to stay inside, or if I'm working with children. It is really great to use because there are no spray fumes to worry about. And that's it. Those are the six supplies that every rock painter needs. Check the description below for links to all the products and more rock painting tutorials.